Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Ashton College alumni interview. I'm Jake Cressy from Ashton's Marketing Communications Department, and I'm joined today by Chitra, a graduate from our Immigration Consultant Diploma Program and co-founder and senior partner of Chitra and Associates. Hi, Chitra. How are you? Great. Uh, nice to connect with you, and it's always good to be connected with Ashton College. <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting <laughs> to have the chance to talk with you. Um, yes. I'm going to get right into it. Uh, a few questions for you. Starting off, what led you to pursue an education with Ashton College? So I'm going to a little bit start with giving you my background. So uh, my research for immigration consulting program started when I was working as a regional director for the education company. It's a company which runs many private career colleges in Canada, such as the Stenberg College and Center for Arts and Technology. So we were in the process of getting a DLI status for our colleges and I was transitioning to a role of a director for international education. I felt there was a need to learn more about immigration and procedures to serve our international students better. So I mainly chose Ashton due to a couple of reasons. Firstly, coming from a private career college background, I was a firm believer of a private college. I believe that it's always, you know, private colleges, if you have to do a specialized program, it is best to go, from there, go to them because they put a lot of efforts into specialized programs. So secondly, um, I was able to see Ashton was focused on student success, read lots of stories from Ashton students and the quality of education provided. I went to the faculty profile and found them to be very, very impressive. They were all practitioners, which was great. Uh, Ashton was offering EPE program, which was basically preparing you for the examination for ICCRC. I think that was great as well. So all these led me to take the Ashton program. Along with that, you know, the Ashton program was online. So I was really busy with my own schedule. So it was really great. I could do it online and was just matching the way I was actually with my work. So that was great. And I'm a firm believer of an online education, having preached online education for many years myself. So I also, you know, like uh, when I was, I've been into education industry for many, many years. So like I'm talking about 2000 when nobody was doing it online. At that time, I used to help universities, uh, you know, design their executive education program. So this was great for me. <laughs> That's excellent. It's very exciting that you have a background in education. That must have made it, I imagine, much easier to pick where to go to get your uh, your education at. Yeah, I think I, then I had an eye which college to pick for. I was, and I'm I'm happy I picked the Ashton. <laughs> <laughs> That's so excellent to hear. You said quite a few nice things about Ashton College. What did you like most about your studies there? So I would say that, you know, when I was actually in the program, the network that we were able to make with the students and with the professors was great, actually. So Ashton encouraged a lot of collaborative learning approach, which was really good. It helped me build connections for my future practice. I built up connections with the, you know, students. I built up connection with the faculty there. Uh, it was a small class size, so it was great because, you know, when you're having extended discussions between students and faculty, you were able to learn more because you were able to discuss cases, you know, real-time cases, which is very important for an immigration consulting practice. So that was really great for me, I would like to say. Right, that's excellent. Now, was there any particular instructor that you found to be very helpful on your journey? Anyone you'd like to shout out? I would say all the instructors were very specialized in different, different areas. So I was particularly, I'm not going to say one or the other, but you know, <laughs> see, when the instructors were like, if it was a refugee class, somebody who's specializing in refugee, if it's a business specializing in a business. So that's what I liked about Ashton. You know, the pick and choose of a professor for like or a faculty for that particular program was really great. Mm, so every professor or instructor rather was specialized in the area they were teaching. Yes, yes, exactly. So that's what I liked about Ashton. That's excellent. So when you enrolled here, what were your goals with Ashton College and how did they help you uh, achieve those? So I would like to say, you know, when I joined Ashton, I really had no clue what I'm going to do. I'm talking about 2004 when DLI was starting. And, you know, we were, I was in, in an international student role in a college. So I had no idea that I'm going to ever come and, you know, start my own practice. Uh, but I would say when I came to the college, I attended uh, Ashton, met the faculty. I started thinking, you know, why not start my own firm? So, you know, I started my own firm and I assist now international students. I also assist private career colleges with, you know, if they have any immigration needs. 
and I also reestablished my goals, I would like to say, at Ashton. I reestablished and said, you know, I would like to recognize this opportunity and combine my, you know, new immigration skill set with my experience. So I was a strategic leader before, like I was heading a lot of companies. So I thought I'm going to combine my corporate experience with the immigration. So that will help me out in the practice. I would say, um, you know, basically Ashton helped me change my goal. (laughs) <laughs> Excellent. It's not only taught you the skills that you're using, but helped you sort of find, uh, redirect yourself, find new yes. goals. Yes, that's correct. That's uh, so good to hear. So what are some of the key skills you uh, use in your field, both as, uh, you know, leading your own business and just in general in immigration practice? I would like to say that this immigration field is a very, very complex, uh, you know, business. So you, uh, I'm going to focus only on the three skill sets, the three critical skill sets, which I believe that they are must have for everybody, okay, to be in this business. And that's where I focus on. And, that, you know, that's besides all the other skill sets that you need to run a business, I'm just going to focus on uh, three. I would like to start with passion for the job. You know, that's the most critical. As a starting point, you know, all successful inter- uh, immigration practitioners should have a true passion. And, you know, this is basically a passion that drives us to work for our clients. Because this is like day, night, you know, there's a lot of work involved in this entire business. And with passion comes compassion for your clients. A commitment to represent and help clients in critical is critical for this profession, actually. So that's the first thing that I would like to say. The second thing is, I would like to say, leveraging your existing strengths. So basically, it is essential that you leverage your existing strengths in this profession. Everybody in this profession has come from different backgrounds, right? So like if you were like in my corporate life, I learned a lot about running a multinational, running people, you know, dealing with corporate. Uh, So I blend all those experiences with my current practice. So anybody who's coming into this practice should also blend whatever experience that they have gained and, you know, combine it together with whatever they're doing now. So the next, I would say, exercise good judgment. That's really, really critical as well. Um, The ability to analyze situation, draw reasons, you know, and make a plan, uh, keeping yourself knowledgeable, learning all the time, you know, reading a lot about immigration laws. They're continuously changing. Every day we get an update. So keeping yourself uh, knowledgeable, committing to continuous learning is also very, very important. I think it's also important to seek help with other experienced professionals. Um, I would say I would have, I have accumulated knowledge through co-counseling, learning from experienced professionals. And in turn, you know, I would like to say that it, anybody new coming to the field should also you know, seek professional help. So that's what is important. Right. Now, you mentioned a few things there, one of them being sort of continuing your professional development and staying up to date on immigration right. law and news. Uh, what are some of your best sources for staying up to date on what's new in immigration? So I would say I have created my own, you know, SharePoint site, which I've collected lots and lots of links of all the news that is coming from every different source. And I listen to a lot of news. So starting from the morning, I start listening to those news. Some, some are even, you know, uh, podcast by some professionals. Some are, you know, like IRCC news, updates, ministerial instructions, everything that's changing on their website, you should be aware of. There's so many provinces that keep announcing things. So you need, need to be aware of, we have forums, we have CAPEC, you know, so we, I actually, I'm involved with lots of things so that I'm keeping myself aware and knowledgeable in this profession. Okay. And how much time would you say you spend average in a week, just keeping up to date on these latest developments? I would say a lot. <laughs> I would say <laughs> at least two, three hours a day. That's the time required in this profession. And that's the commitment required. If somebody is, you know, has the ability to read a lot, then they should actually, you know, get into this. So I would say now my reading before it was more so, you know, uh, reading lots of books. Now it's reading lots of immigration stuff. (laughs) (laughs) That's excellent. So what is the best part of your job in your opinion? So I would say that, you know, when I'm able to create value in businesses um, or individual clients, business clients, and, um, I'm also a management consultant. So basically I combine my management consulting knowledge with immigration law and it gives me a great satisfaction that I'm able to not only practice immigration law and also combine my previous knowledge because every knowledge that you're able to combine together. I also like when we are able to, I'm able to achieve the immigration goal for a client 
be it mobile global mobility, establishing new business, and assisting individuals, family sponsorships, you know, I'm able to solve complex immigration problem, to see family united, to create an opportunity for my clients to live secure life in Canada. These are all the best parts of my life. And it's great to get some thank you email cards from the client and sometimes scotch as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think I really like when they send an email thanking or they refer someone. So that's really a uh, great part of this job. That's excellent. That sounds very good. Now, what's something that people might not know about your line of work what, that you, you think they should know? What's something that like the average consumer won't know about immigration consultants? So I think they don't know how much we have to keep learning and how much... <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, when, when we join a profession, they say, okay, you've studied, you've studied this, you know, bachelor, you studied master, you just studied diploma, it's all good. But no, you know, you have to keep learning. We come across different laws all the time. It's not just the immigration, you will be surprised we blend with, you know, family, you, we blend with employment, we blend, blend with all types of laws surrounding us. And, and also not only laws, but people, you know, and how every individual is different, how we, re- we have to relate, every, you know, Canadian culture with different cultures, how we have to deal with different culture, people from different backgrounds. So it's always, you know, we have to learn a lot, I would say. So, yeah, so just <laughs> that we're coming there and, you know, consulting someone mean, doesn't mean that we're just coming and we've done a course, uh, which is like oh, one year, you know, and then pass the exam, but it's continuous learning that we are doing for them. Oh, wow. So uh, on that track, what advice would you give to somebody either at the early stages of their immigration consulting career or just starting to look into this career? What's some advice you might have for them? I would say immigration is a life changing career. So, you know, it's a heart of Canadian culture. So we see that immigration con- uh, is a very big industry in Canada. So if you are trying to change, there's so many people who are foreign born individuals in this country, right? And every year, Canada is said to, you know, welcomes a lot of immigrants. So I would say if you decided to make this as a career, you should invest in learning the skills required to make it a successful career. And basically, you know, you have to get the knowledge of everything. If you're running a practice on your own, you not only have to know immigration, you also have to learn how to run a business, how to be a marketer, you know, how to run accountancy, you know, so, and have specialized people too. So you can hire, you know, people who are specialized in their fields, but learn to learn everything and have, try to have as many mentors as possible, you know, so it is really important to have mentors in this profession as well. Right. And I see Ashton is doing a lot of specialized program and I would encourage people to do those programs specialized. I was really impressed reading those programs. So that will give them actually different, uh, different areas to practice. Yeah. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, speaking of practicing, what are some of your future goals and aspirations? Where are you hoping to take your own practice? Thank you for asking that. Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> so having spent now five years in this profession, I would like to say that, you know, I'm, I would like to know, now go and expand my practice. I would like to service more clients from the, in different cities out of Canada as well. Though we, I do service them, but I would like to have a presence in those cities. Maybe after the COVID situation changes, you know, it'll be a great idea to have. Right now, we're doing everything online. So we do, do cater to clients all across the world. But, you know, it will be great to have presence in different cities for us. You know, that will mm-hmm. be our expansion plan. Yeah. Now, are there certain cities in Canada where immigration is uh, sort of more of a, a bigger industry than others? Yeah, I think the eastern Canada is really big. You know, a lot of people, when they think about Canada, they think about Toronto. As a city, okay, you know, I want to go to Toronto, but also Atlantic Canada is expand, expanding. I've lived in Halifax, like the Atlantic Canada for four years. So, you know, I've seen it grow. And I think a lot of people now want to go to Atlantic Canada. One, they're, they're able to have a balance of life, which is like, it's, the, it's not that expensive a city to live. So a lot of people prefer cities like that. So yeah, I, I would say it's expanding everywhere and the government is making lots of program in different for different cities. So smaller regional communities are also coming up now. Right. Um, and I, how, I guess, how has it changed during the uh, COVID pandemic? What have been the major changes to the immigration industry? I think what happened is, you know, a lot of applications 
are on hold or the processing time has increased. And also the draws that were happening before, a lot of draws for the foreign people, like people outside Canada for express entry, uh, they reduced down a little bit. So, you know, uh, also the mo global mobility is reduced. People are not able to come here. Students are not able to come here, all of them. So I think slowly when these changes, like we are out of the COVID, you know, we'll see more people coming to Canada through different, different programs. Excellent. Like I can Thank say you. some applications are on hold for, Eight, eight months, so <laughs> I'm sure they all are looking forward to come as soon as possible. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Now, uh, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. We're just about to wrap up. Uh, do you have any final words of wisdom, any more advice you'd like to share, or anything I haven't given you the chance to say during this interview? No, it was great, actually, to talk to you, Jake, and thank you very much for the interview. And I'm sure, you know, uh, yeah, I think I, I've well, given all the advice that was possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And uh, thank you all for joining us for this interview. Uh, take care.